everyone. Welcome to the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Today, I'm joined by Mark Spinner, the president and CEO of Access One. Mark, how are you today? Hey, Jared. Great. Thanks for having me. Excited to have you. Uh, I'm pumped to, to start getting into uh, your background and, and to learn more about Access One, but it'd be great if you could start off by telling the audience a little bit about you, and then we'll talk sure. more about your company. Yeah, sure. Um, just a little, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm the CEO of Access One. I've been here for about six years. Um, I, I partnered with our founder, Dr. Salton, who um, started the business, you know, just born from his, his patient advocacy mission and his roots on, on caring for patients as a primary care physician um, and coming from a, a healthcare family. Um, I am, you know, kind of from the Southeast. We're based in the Charlotte area, and I'm, I'm actually originally uh, from South Carolina, graduated from Rice University um, over in Texas and went right into the finance and, and, um, um, and banking area. Um, always been sort of involved with growth companies from a corporate finance strategy, mergers and acquisitions perspective as I sort of grew up in my career. And then got the entrepreneurial bug um, after kind of surviving the, the, uh, the Great Recession and, and um, um, the downturn. Then in, in 2010, I sort of stepped out on my own and started a company in this healthcare, technology and finance intersection. I'm still focused on companies, though, um, and, you know, serving businesses. Um, and then with Access One, um, after I exited that company, I really wanted to try to find something that um, was more mission driven, that had, um, you know, that had a, a clear um, social benefit uh, element to it. And, um, and that's kind of how I came, uh, came to meet Access One, Dr. Saltman, and that's kind of part of our story. So Very that's cool. my background. And, and when I when I ask background, it usually always ties into what follows next. And Every time I have a guest on, I have them talk me through the why, how, what of their company. So yeah. could you kind of, you don't have to follow that order, but it's much appreciated if you can. Sure. Uh, tell us the why, how, what of Access One. Yeah, no, um, why, you know, Access One exists, I think, because there's a, a, a huge demand for, um, for, for what we do and, and how we help consumers. And, you know, I think Part of that is just because the financial journey in healthcare is still very broken. Um, there is an affordability crisis in um, in healthcare. The con the consumer um, is is really in a tough spot, and can and that problem continues to grow. There's there's this space between the part of you know, America who can pay any healthcare bill when do anytime they get it, right? There's, there's some of us that, that are in that bucket. Then there's sort of the other end who's covered by the public safety nets, you know, charity care, Medicaid, the different programs that we have to care for those in the most need. The space in between, I read in the Wall Street Journal article a couple of years ago, that's that third America. It's that space in between. You're not covered by charity care or a public safety net program, and you don't have disposable income or savings to handle any medical bill anytime it comes. That third America is large and growing. Um, that it's something I think we all feel and has continued to exacerbate. Some folks on, you know, on the uh, <clears throat> on the industry side would say the consumer is the fastest growing payer in healthcare. That's what I'm talking about, right? More cost has shifted to the consumer. We look at that too and try to understand it even now. All this time and money and technology has been, inv been invested into like patient portals and digital experience and all these things. But, you know, we run a survey every year. Just a few months ago at the end of 2021, we ran a survey and, you know, over 60% of people are still so worried about healthcare that they're avoiding going to get healthcare out of, out of concern for what it costs. You know, um, over 40% are still confused about what they owe. So there's this big gap between the experience as a healthcare economy that we're delivering to 
consumers and what they need to understand and then actually pay um, their bill. So that's kind of the why piece. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Okay. Um, no, and, and, and it kind of ties into, so that's why I always like the why following the background because sure. usually like where you're at today, that why matches up usually with the personal why, right? Not, not all, not all the time, but I would say nine out of 10 times there's a, there's alignment there. So yeah. thank you for sharing. One, one of the things that you and I wanted to talk to more about today, Mark, and if you want to add anything else that you forgot, you know, you, you want to add on top of that, please let me know. But one of the, the yeah, I mean, I can, you, I can do the how I, I can do the how and the what, um, if that helps. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sh sure. Yeah. So, so, you know, I think that affordability crisis, that consumer piece is, is, um, is the why the how is, um, really meeting the patient where they are in their healthcare financial journey. So that means technology enablement. So, so how we address this consumer is through a B2B2C business model where we are partnering with healthcare providers to deliver a technology enabled managed service to them to engage with those consumers and give them a, a very um, technology rich user experience from very early on in their you know, revenue cycle journey from their financial engagement journey, like pre-service, when they start to understand, hey, what might this cost me? Um, all the way through to um, post adjudication and uh, when they discover what their, you know, what their bill is, their insurance has cleared, the financial clearance process has run relative to charity care or any other um, public safety net um, you know, programs that are available. Um, so we are going to deliver um, the opportunity for them to engage mostly digital first through omni-channel engagement platforms that are text-based, email-based, um, and, you know, have easy ways to understand their bill and pay it in full when due in a short-term kind of care now, pay later format, or with long-term flexible repayment programs uh, that we manage on behalf of those health systems. So, so that's kind of how, so, so what that is, is really is, is technology and services to manage pay, um, uh, bill presentment and payment options for consumers from pay in full all the way through long-term financing. Interesting. And, and we're going to tie that into, thank you for, for giving us the why, how, what, because we are, our, our core topic today that we kind of want to dive into, it's really twofold, but. We want to talk more about the financial, why the financial journey for healthcare is broken, but then also helping patients pay for healthcare costs, what that looks like. So let, let's start off with, because I think this probably should come first, talk us through why, why you believe the financial journey for healthcare is broken and maybe kind of talk us through that scenario. Sure. Um, so the financial, it is, first of all, it's just very complicated. You know, I think you have this this ecosystem where um, the, the you know most most consumers that are that are that we're interacting with have some kind of insurance, um, but the structure of benefits over the last decade have gotten complicated and reduced um, you know the yield that they get from those products. So what we tend to see is consumers that have insurance, but they're pretty underinsured relative to what they're getting from that. But it's tough to understand as a consumer. And um, so that complexity is a big part of it. On the health system side, you know, for better or worse, it's a slow moving market in terms of change. So the legacy of paper bills and phone calls and really kind of pay me later, um, you know, mentality is pretty well baked in and still the, you know, status quo, three paper bills and a collection agency. That is kind of what you get in healthcare for the most part. Um, 
So those are two big pieces. Now, everyone wants to move towards a more you know, digital patient experience, and there's been a ton of investment for sure. One of the key things that I think has happened as you look at what we sit with today and you listen to that consumer through the statistics I just mentioned to you, that's 2021, you know, second half. It's not like, you know, the providers haven't invested. They have. It's really, you know, I think they're coming from it from a place of we have these huge systems in place, the, the electronic medical record systems, these EMR systems, and things are pretty baked into that. And that's the anchor for where to invest. But healthcare is episodic. It's not like my local, you know, my bank where I have an app on my phone and I use it every day or every week. So I'm willing to download an application or I'm willing to have um, a login that I use a lot and I remember and it sticks with me. Healthcare is not quite like that. Um, so the the places that have been invested in aren't really the best places where the modern consumer wants to interact. The modern consumer is on their cell phone, man, you know, very active with their text. And if it's not two clicks, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's pretty annoying for, for the consumer. The other thing I think that consumers have become very used to is engaging very quickly at the point of commerce with, flexible payment options, buy now, pay later options, presenting you with other things you might need. It's sort of this anticipation and compliance with consumer needs in a very tech forward format. That's what we are being trained to consume everywhere else in our consumer journey. Healthcare is behind on that. Healthcare is behind on that. So I think that's why it's still broken is there are these gaps. The consumer is moving much more quickly than the healthcare marketplace is responding to how they behave. Interesting. Yeah, you're. you're I, I like the way that you you put that when you were talking about the applications and you know healthcare is difficult to actually have an app. You're going to download. I, I find myself even for just everyday things, right? If I have to download an app, I probably will download the app, but it's deleted after I use it, which is probably counterintuitive, right? Like, uh, it's. Um, and I think as healthcare changes and you see people using healthcare services more, mm -hmm. that could change, right? But that that you're talking that has to be like major market shifts and how people behave in order for that to be the case. But yeah, if it's not two clicks, it yeah. usually gets gets thrown aside. I, I think that's a good point, Jared. And then the other thing I would say is this fragmented nature of healthcare delivery, right? I mean, our average consumer that we serve is, you know, mid forties female, you know, two children, and, and she's, she's the healthcare head of household. She's managing care consumption, delivery, bill, and bill payments for pretty much everybody, including the husband usually. Um, and she's dealing with five or six different provider entities, like maybe the health system for a couple of these, but then there's these other companies, you know, providers She's going to have five apps or five logins. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's just a little messy. I remember probably two years ago, I had the, the CEO of Advantia Health on uh, the podcast, which uh, at the time was Sean Glass. And we were talking through some statistic where it was like 80 or 85% of the healthcare decisions in a household are, is usually by it is usually by like the mother, um, yeah. you know, assuming, assuming there's kids. And even if, even if there, there weren't kids involved, usually that was the person that was still making all, making all the healthcare decisions. Um, so you talking about, because obviously your, your children aren't going to see the same clinician that, that you and your wife would see. And then your wife is going to see clinicians that you wouldn't even see. So yeah, that's a good way that you put it. There's too much for, for that one person or several people to have to manage in one app um, yeah. because of how it's fragmented. Can, can we talk a little bit, Mark, can we quickly just dive into how Access One is helping patients pay for healthcare costs, kind of what you see in that mm -hmm. regard, and then quickly just as we wrap up, what's next? Yeah, sure. So... Um... I think we, we sort of have two 
two um, customers, if you will. There's the consumer. That's our, our customer, you know, right? And we're trying to deliver value to them to make their life easier. That persona we just talked about, the, the, the mother, the healthcare head of household, um, she's got a lot on her plate. So how do, we, how do we put ourselves in her shoes and from a very consumer-centric place deliver value to her when it comes to healthcare and the financial journey? And then the other, the second is really our client. And our client is that B2B side of the equation. So in our case, it's the healthcare provider, the health system, the hospital, the large, you know, multi-specialty practice. Um, we, we need to provide value to them to make managing this consumer journey more um, productive. So drive better yield, better per payment performance, number one. Number two, patient satisfaction. Whatever we do has to really create goodwill and drive brand value for that provider. And then third, just make it easy for me. They are incredibly overwhelmed with work through the pandemic, but even before. It is very, very difficult to run a healthcare organization today from technology, pandemic response, input costs, staffing. It is difficult. So if you're not if you're not doing something for them um, with a service, you know, element to it, it's it, it, it's tough. So we're trying to ease the burden from a um, you know from a, a support perspective there relative to this consumer piece. And don't forget, still the lion's share of the revenue for healthcare providers comes from not the consumer, but a third-party payer like Medicare, Medicaid, or commercial insurance. Um, so. While this has gotten bigger, this consumer piece, it's still not nearly as big as that other side. Um, so for the consumer, um, I, I really think that's kind of the ground zero for us in terms of product strategy and product design. So for us, that means where where is she? Where does she start? Um, on the technology side, that's got to be mobile first. It's got to be designed and work extraordinarily well on your cell phone. It's got to be a couple of clicks in anything that you're doing. So what we're trying to do just kind of from a highest level is have a contiguous experience from pre-service estimate through, you know, uh, hopefully avoiding going to bad debt. So if it's going to bad debt and creating medical debt with, you know, collection agencies and such, that's kind of the end of our piece. We don't go into that. We're trying to do everything we can to engage, communicate, and then present realistic, affordable options before that happens. Um, so all of that is about getting them to engage, much more likely to open a text message from their provider than hang around for a piece of snail mail, um, right? Much faster. So it's digital engagement. And then it's presenting what are those bill details? How do I trust that this is my bill? It really is for something I consumed. And you've adjudicated properly whatever other, you know, payment benefits have needed to be applied. You've, you've cleared me through financial clearance relative to any charity care I might've been able to get or any other discounts I might've been able to get. So I've got to communicate that in a simple way through a, you know, mobile interface. And then just like I would tap to pay through Google pay or Apple pay or whatever, I need something that cool and easy to affect payment in full. If it's something that I can pay in full. But it is healthcare, so when those bills start to creep up, what else are my options? Could I pay in three? Could I pay in four? Could I get a long-term repayment plan? You know, for um, for this, you know, for this bill from the health system, delivering that continuity um, and continuum um, of options is is what we do for the consumer. The other thing is there are there's more than just our our model consumer here, we actually call her Penny. That's that's her name in our, our world, her persona. That's that, you know, that mother, that insured person. There are other personas too. So we have products specifically for catastrophic uninsured patients that have different options for them in terms of repayment terms and repayment flexibility. And then we also have something that's really kind of focused on health equity relative to those folks who are in some kind of partial financial assistance situation where like in the South, where we have a lot of clients, they didn't expand Medicaid. 
So there are a bunch of people kind of between, you know, call it 150% and 400% of the poverty level. Many providers are doing something for them, an additional charity, like a 25, 75% write-off. But what about the rest? We're delivering a specific program for like those most in need to try to get to them, create flexibility and long-term repayment programs so that they don't hide from getting the care they know they need. That's what happens is when people don't understand that there are options that they can live with, they avoid getting the care. And from a long-term public health perspective and from an equity and outcomes perspective, that's really bad. So that's, that's kind of where you, you see how that mission keeps connecting in and that, that kind of do no harm mission, that altruistic lens that we look through from our founders beginnings, right? That is, I think what really gets us uh, excited about coming to work. It really is a true oath for us where it's written on the walls in our office, do no harm. That's the oath that our founder took. That's the oath that we take. So no matter what we do with any of our programs, tools, technologies, the North Star is, is consumer empowerment and do no harm. We are trying to create positive outcomes out of sometimes in healthcare financial situations that are really difficult. Well, uh, I just want to tell you, Mark, I'm so happy that you were able to come on the podcast. We were able to go over these core topics. We were able to learn about you and Access One. And hopefully we can have you on again real soon in the future. But uh, awesome. again, really appreciate it. It was great learning more about you and the company and wish you all the best of luck. Well, it's our pleasure, Jared. I, I appreciate you providing the forum and um, engaging with this topic. It's just important and keeps it keeps getting more important. So I think the more attention we, you know, we bring to it and the more minds we get working on the problem, the better off um, consumers will be. So really appreciate your time and energy on this. 